All right, so let's look at half-life problem two in your notes. Again, we're going to use a graph to determine the half-life of californium-252. So this is a different isotope. The previous isotope that we dealt with in the first problem was iodine-131. That had a half-life of eight days. This is a different isotope, so it's going to have a different half-life. Remember, half-life is very specific to the isotope. So do we know what the half-life of californium is? No, because it's not explained to us in the problem. So that means we have to use our graph. Now. This graph, if you look at it, isn't measuring the amount of the isotope that's left, the amount that hasn't decayed yet that you still have present. It isn't measuring it in grams, it's measuring it in percent. Percents are really easy because they always start with 100 and then they just get, keep getting cut in half. So you get used to those numbers. Now, at time zero, remember this is before any decay has occurred. This is the full amount of the unstable, unhappy isotopes. All of them are there we have 100%. So that's how much we have when no time has passed, 100%. I don't know what the half-life is yet. I'll find out in a second. But what I do know is that I have 100%. And what's going to happen to that percent over time? It's going to go down by half. Every half-life that passes, it's going to go down by half, which is really easy when you have percents. So let's start filling in this little chart here. We know that if we start with 100% and a half-life passes, we're going to have 50%. So let's now look at the graph and figure out how long did it take to get to 50% for this particular isotope. So there's our 100%. Here's 50. Go over, 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 and there you are. Now all you have to do is look down, 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 down. And maybe it's slightly more than halfway. We're going to make a judgment call here and say it's about 2.6 years. Remember, the previous example was eight days. This is 2.6 years. So this takes longer for this stuff to decay. All right, so we just answered a couple questions here. We know the half-life is 2.6 years. So let's fill that in this big chart here, 2.6 years. That's what the half-life is for this particular isotope. So now, instead of thinking in chunks of eight days, we're thinking in chunks of 2.6 years. So this is 2.6, another half-life passing. That means another 2.6 years have gone by, another 2.6, another 2.6, another 2.6. The half-life for this isotope, for Californium-252, is always 2.6 years. Now, let's talk about the elapsed time. If I hit go on my clock, now the clock starts ticking. Zero plus one half-life means 2.6 years have gone by. Now, if another half-life passes, it's 2.6 plus another 2.6. That's 5.2. Then we add another 2.6. We got 7.8. And then add another 2.6. And we're at, what are we at, 10.4. And then we had another 2.6, and we are at 13 uh, years. So the elapsed time should always, always, always go up. If your time is getting cut in half, that means you're time traveling or doing something weird. Your time always goes up, never, ever down. What does go down is your sample size. So if we start with 100%, and after the first half-life, it gets cut in half. Well, then after the next half-life, it's going to get cut in half again. And then that's going to get cut in half. And then that's going to get cut in half. And you get the idea here. You get 3.125 or something. So we now know how much in percent uh, that it remains at each time period here. So now if we look at these questions, we can answer them. What percent uh, is there after one half-life? Well, we start with 100. After one half-life, we have 50% left. What percent will be present after three half-lives? That means one, two, three half-lives have passed, so we're at 12.5%. And what percent of the sample will be uh, present after 10.4 years have passed? That's here, and that tells us 6.25% is going to be remaining. If you look at the graph, 
you'll still figure out the same information. But take a look down here. See how those values would be really, really hard to differentiate? It would be hard to guesstimate how much that is versus, oops, versus how much that is. They're really, really, really close. You don't have a lot of uh, help with, with values and lines and stuff there to really differentiate the way you could. If I said, how much is that and how much is that? Here, there's a big gap, big difference. But as this curve, and it's always going to be this nice exponential curve, as it starts to flatten out, it's really hard to tell what numbers are where. So you really should be doing math and figuring out what the amount is by cutting it in half each time. And if you can hit divided by two, divided by two, divided by two, divided by two, and you can keep adding the same value to get your elapsed time, then half-life problems really aren't hard. All right, we'll get ready to do the next problem in a minute.